<laughs> 56-year-old influencer Gail McNeil has over half a million followers who love her zest for life and positivity around all things ageing. But it was just five years ago when Gail was at her lowest, feeling unfit and impacted by the menopause, so she sold her house and all her belongings and moved to Portugal for a new way of life in the south. Well, Gail joins us now to tell us why it's never too late to transform your life. Uh, Gail, welcome to this Hello. morning. It's amazing Hello. to have you here. A lot of women will be watching this, not just women, but a lot of men that sort of get to a certain age and they'll be going, I need to do something in my life, I want to make a big change. They talk about it, they think about it, but they don't do it. What was it about your situation that meant that you actually went through with it and had this dramatic life change? Well, I think the thing is that people overthink things and mm. they get, think of all the reasons why they can't do something, not the reasons why they can do something. And uh, we gather all these possessions up over the years and we hold on to them, but we have to look after them, they're a burden. Mm. But it was actually George Clooney's to blame for all of this. Because... What? <laughs> of course <laughs> because... he is. What? <laughs> Sounds like my kind of problem. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the film Up in the Air. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> and in the film, he has a backpack yeah. and he puts everything he owns in a backpack. And he said, imagine if you, everything you owned was in your backpack. And the moral his, of his story was, Oh, no, you need more than that. But I heard that and I was, uh, that was it. I said, I want everything I own in a backpack. So I decided to sell everything. And my husband was, he was just... Keen was to he do in it too? He was, he was just like, do what you like. It makes you happy, let's do it. Did you have to sell him the idea though? Or was no, he like... No, he was like, hey, this is great. Yep. This is great. So I said, everything you own, you have to look after, you have to maintain it. So um, I, uh, to begin with, it's really difficult because yeah, letting of go of things that you've looked after... But I got carried away and I was burning things, so there was no going back. Wow. I was, I was in the garden burning my son's artwork and things like that because... Well, that you've had since he was little? Yeah. Goodness me, how did your son feel about this? He didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> he was off travelling the world, so... So uh, he was having his own adventure? He was having his... He, he, he's like me, he's quite a minimalist. Mm. He likes to be agile and mobile and be able to go and do what he wants when he, when he wants to do it. So um, it's very addictive, though, because once you start burning things and giving things away and donating things and selling things, you just can't stop. Well, you realise you don't really need it. You don't need anything. So we sold everything and then we um, downsized... Did you, did you, can I just ask a question? Did, you, did your husband or you ever go to get something and go, where's that gone? And yeah, you said, oh, burned it. Sorry, I sold that last week. Yeah, that happened burned a lot. It. That happened a lot. And also, people would turn up and they would have their truck outside and, oh, what have you come for? You've come for the table, you've come for this. And I'd be like, what size feet have you got? And they what? Do you need some wellies? And I'd just give them a pair of, you know, <laughs> to wellies or something. So you were giving away his clothes as well? Yeah, I was, well, I was giving away everything. So, so we, why did you choose Portugal? What was the well, motive? Well, uh, we, we'd planned for about 10 years to move to Italy. Okay. So we'd learnt the language. We're going to move to Italy. Wow. And then... Um, but we travelled all over Italy and I kept saying, oh, but there's nowhere that feels like home. And, oh, it's nice, it's nice, but it didn't feel like home. So we went to um, Portugal, I saw a TV programme, and I thought, oh, that looks really, really nice. It looks very natural, very wild, um, which you wouldn't believe, because most people don't see that part mm -hmm. of Portugal. No. So we uh, took a flight within a couple of days, and we uh, landed in the north of Portugal, and I was just smitten. It's very wild and rugged. Mm. I mean, these pictures here are Al Algarve, I mean, and everyone knows Algarve. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, but there's a real wild side to it as well. There's amazing bird life, and there's amazing walks in the north in Jerez, in Suajo. And um, I was just smitten with it, and the people were so lovely. So I was just, this, I could live here. It was and that then simple. That was kind of the catalyst for everything else as well. It was yeah. kind of, you took that. Huge jump, yeah, which was brave, right? And it's kind yeah. of like it's going a little bit into the no unknown. You're scaring yourself yeah. a little bit, and then you changed all different aspects of your life as yeah. well. Yeah, well, we moved there with just ten boxes of essentials like paperwork and things you can't live without. You know, there's yes. You, I tried to get rid of everything. I really did. So we moved there with ten boxes, and then the whole lockdown thing happened. Mm. And I was someone that was walking six hours a day with my dogs in Devon when we lived in Devon, mm. and suddenly I'm locked down. You know, alcohol becomes a little bit more accessible when you're at home mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I uh, I started drinking more than I should mm -hmm. and I'm, by that I mean two drinks a day which mm -hmm. to a lot of people is quite normal yeah yep. but I was drinking two drinks a day and then we uh, it just kind of was piling weight on piling weight on but I didn't really notice because you know it was a chaotic time in the world and then we took a trip to the north of Portugal 
and I was film. I love filming things. I film everything. I'm like, oh, I get this dog swimming in the water. And then I looked at that image two weeks later when I, and I was about to delete it. And I said, no, I'm going to keep that because I don't want to look and feel like that again. And it wasn't so much how I looked, actually. Mm. It was, I could see in my eyes how I felt. Right. I was very it. lost, very stressed, and it was in a very dark place because... Go on. So I was going to say, so how <laughs> did you shift then? What is it? Because we talked about the one bit of gym equipment yeah. that you have used <clears> that has <throat> helped you drop all this weight. Yeah. Well, to me, it's not really the weight. It, was about, it wasn't about losing weight. It was about stop gaining weight. So I wanted right. to stop gaining weight. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to get back to my fitness. So I couldn't walk. I couldn't, couldn't go out and about. So I wanted something I could do at home that didn't cost money, that I could do on my own, that I could do indoors when it was hot. So I picked up my jump rope. I thought, I did this as a child. How difficult can it be? She said. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> well, looking at you now, it's not difficult at all. No, but when you no. start, I mean, you're, you're, the, the exercise stuff that you post is just fantastic. Yeah. It's a little bit and often. And then your diet as well, you changed too. Yeah. You became a vegan. Well, I, I'm plant-based. I never say vegan, I say plant-based because okay. I think that when you say vegan, people say, well, I can't do that and it's too scary. Oh, OK. But I say plant-focused, plant-based, um, so that it's encouraged. I don't tell people not to eat meat. I say yeah. eat more plants. Mm -hmm. So um, I... But it wasn't so much what I was eating. I changed my eating habits. So fasting? So, yeah, so I do... A, most people do an eight-hour fasting uh, eating window in a fasting period of 18 hours or 16 hours. I have a six-hour eating window. Okay. So I choose... Ooh. I know. I, I just did the math. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so 18 hour fast. <clears throat> yeah, so I do an 18 hour fast every day. And the reason for that is that I'm a, I'm a real foodie and I love food and I'm obsessed with food and I used to look forward to food. Mm -hmm. And um, now I only need to think about food for six hours. Okay. And the other 18 hours, I can be doing something else. Uh, and I had to learn to find things to occupy my mind. So I think with food, it becomes entertainment. Yeah. And people eat for fun, they eat to something, yeah. enjoyment for their mouth. Yeah, 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 yeah. And for me, it's about nutrition now. But the first six weeks were really hard. But after those six weeks, cravings went, hunger went, and I lost my excess weight and I've stayed the same way ever since. Mm -hmm. It's so lovely to meet you, Gal. What, yeah. you're, you're, we, Thank we, you. We'll put all the details of how people can follow you and understand some yeah. of the inspiration. And come back again and tell us Oh, thank you, I'd love to. Because there'll be lots of our viewers who will be sitting there thinking that's exactly the sort of thing we're fancy doing. I just need to have that push. Adventure. Have that moment. Yeah. Thank you thank very you. much. You're very welcome. Thank, thank you.